All right, here we've got a chain which is hanging off the edge of a table. Uh, now this chain initially has some length Li hanging off the edge of the table, and it's gonna slide until some length of chain Lf is hanging off the edge of the table. And what we're gonna do in this problem is solve for the velocity or the speed of the chain after it slid down this edge of the table. Now the fact of the matter is this problem is very similar to an Atwood machine. See with an Atwood machine like this, which we've explored in the past, you have a mass which is being pulled down by the force of gravity and that is in turn dragging another mass along with it because they're connected by a string. Now the difficulty in dealing with the chain is that as the chain moves downward, the mass that is hanging off the edge of the table is going to increase. And that creates a little bit of a problem in our solution. So to solve for the final velocity of this chain, I first want to take a look at the force which is acting on this length of chain that's hanging off the edge of the table. So we know the force by gravity on this length of chain is the force by gravity. The issue being we have to relate the mass of chain hanging off the edge of the table to the actual length of chain hanging off the table. But realize if this chain has some total length L and some total mass M, then it has a mass per unit length, which we're gonna call lambda, that is M over L. And you'll sometimes see this referred to as linear mass density. So knowing the mass per unit length multiplied by the length of chain hanging off the edge of the table is in fact the mass of chain hanging off the edge of the table, we get an expression for the force by gravity relating the total mass and length of the chain to how much length of chain is actually hanging off the edge of the table. So let's take a look at the graph of this function. We see this function is simply a linear trend which has a slope of mg over l. So when there's this small length of chain hanging off the edge of the table, there's going to be a small force by gravity on the chain. But as more and more chain hangs off the edge of the table, that force by gravity is going to increase. So going back to our Atwood machine, as this block moved down, there was a constant force of M2G acting on the block and the system. In the case of our chain, we can see that as the chain moves downward, there's an increasing force acting on the system. And what this means is we can't just plug this into Newton's second law and use the kinematics in order to find the acceleration and in turn final velocity of the chain. So instead what we're going to do is use this function and the work energy theorem in order to determine how much work is done by gravity as the chain moves downward. Now work by gravity is given by, or if you want to apply calculus, the infinite sum of f of x dx. And realize what we're looking at in this graph is a function that's showing us the force as a function of position. So really the work as the hanging chain goes from this initial length Li to some final length Lf is given by the area underneath this curve. So integrating this function with respect to position, we'll be able to find the total work done. But realize we're gonna to have to look at the work from some initial length to some final length. That means we're looking at the definite integral here. So evaluating this integral, we get the total work done is given by this function. Now remember, we're trying to solve for the final velocity of this chain after it's moved down some distance. What I want you to realize is that this work done by gravity is the change in kinetic energy of the chain. So if the chain started at rest, we simply set this function equal to the kinetic energy of the chain. And we have a little bit of a cancel party here. And we're left with this function relating the final velocity of the chain to the total length of the chain as well as the initial and final lengths of chain hanging off the edge of the table. Now one thing to point out is that the mass of the chain canceled out here. Uh, so that means regardless of how heavy or dense this chain is, that's not really going to affect how fast it's going after it's moved down a certain distance. 
So this is how we go through and solve for the final velocity of a frictionless chain as it slides off the edge of a table. Realize it is fundamentally no different than an Atwood machine. And on that note, that's all for now.